Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, this is a good question because it's a complicated one. Um, well, you know, maybe not. Maybe it's it's more that people make it complicated. I actually don't think it's that complicated. So uh, the question is uh, from a viewer. It says, hey Perch, hope the family's doing well. Have you heard about this news that Texas has been banning a number of graphic novels from their school libraries as part of the removal of books? Those graphic novels include V for Vendetta, Why the Last Man, and graphic novel adaptations of novels like Handmaid's Tale, as well as books with themes about race and LGBTQ. Their reasoning is that these books could cause discomfort among their young readers, though others speculate it's because the people doing the banning don't like the themes these titles have. What do you think on this topic? Do you think they're actually looking out for the children, or do you think that's just an excuse to push their own brand of cancel culture? And do you think other graphic novels such as Mouse, They Called Us Enemy, and Superman Smashes the Clan could be next on the ban list, particularly after certain right-wing outlets like The Daily Wire targeted Superman Smashes the Clan as unsuitable for young readers, calling it political bludgeoning? Um, and then there's a, a helpful link here about some of the, uh, the, the books that have been banned. Um, and here's the important thing for use in high school book clubs or classroom libraries. And that's going to come into play with um, my answer here in a moment. So they have Brave Face, a memoir, The Handmaid's Tale, graphic novel, In the Dream House, None of the Above, The Nowhere Girls, Out of Darkness, Red at the Bone, The Lottery, Shout, V for Vendetta, and Why the Last Man, book one. Weirdly, not uh, Why the Last Man, book uh, like two or three, which I believe there's more nudity later on in the book than the beginning, but I may be wrong about that. I, I don't know. It's been, I, I yeah, now, now I'm kind of curious. Well, so here's the thing about this. And I think uh, there's a lot of, there is a lot of, of action on it. And there's some pages that have been shared of a um, pretty graphic uh, uh, LGBTQ uh, graphic novel where it shows, uh, I, I, you can't tell the age because everything's drawn in kind of anime chibi style, which basically renders people from the ages of eight to like 40, all the same. Um, but young, uh, basically young kiddish, uh, basically giving oral sex, uh, to, uh, an, uh, you know, an unknown person. You don't see the, the other parts of the body and it's very graphic. I mean, you see, um, you, you see, <laughs> you see parts in parts, I guess is the best way to put it, not to set off YouTube. Um, and so some of those pages have been shared around and there's been this kind of argument over, um, is it appropriate for LGBTQ themes to be in schools or not? Or if they ban it, then it's uh, bigotry. And if they don't ban it, then it's pedophilia. And that's how the, the argument has been bouncing back and forth. Um, I think it's easier than that. Uh, or at least for me, I, it's a, it's a difficult topic. I do think that, uh, some books don't belong in schools. I, 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 and, and I say that just kind of full stop. I think that there are books that are written for, you know, that are age appropriate that don't fit in schools. And if we're talking, this is where you have to go. If you're talking about an elementary school, then you probably shouldn't have Watchmen, the comic in that elementary school. Um, I do think that if a parent wants the kid to read Watchmen, I think there's nothing stopping the parent from going to the library and checking it out or buying it. But I think in a school library, not, not you know, the difference between a public library and a school library, you know, in a school library, the content there should be age appropriate. Um, I think that, you know, in if you're going to be having historical texts about the Klan, I think it's appropriate to have books in there that uh, reference the Klan. At that age, it's part of history. And I, I, I did another video talking about there's these efforts to kind of erase slavery and you shouldn't. It's it's part of the history. It's something that we must reconcile with as a as a nation. It, it, it can't be glossed over. And I also think you need it because we defeated slavery. We, we went to war to end some of these terrible practices. And so erasing it uh, erases that that good thing that was done. Um, I, I That's one of the more sinister parts of, of some of the, uh, the, the, the teaching that goes on where it's like, we want to erase parts of what went on. It's like part of what you want to erase that is that the country realized its mistake, went to a bloody fight, uh, lost many lives in order to end the evil, uh, that went on there. And that's, uh, that's goofy. But, but at the same time in an elementary school, you shouldn't have books with like very graphic, uh, photos or depictions of people being lynched or, or, or dead. I think that's inappropriate for that age. Um, I, I think that there's a major difference between what you put in a school and what you get at home. 
I don't think that it's a good idea if you have a six-year-old to sit them down in front of Call of Duty and let them go crazy on a video game console. I think that they don't have the age to really know what to do with that. I think that, you know, to, in a completely different way, if you want to have a, like an eight-year-old playing God of War, um, that's probably a bad idea too, both for the violence and, you know, Kratos gets to, you know, basically hit some at several parts during the game. And if you've never discussed uh, sex or any of that stuff with your kids, then, you know, doing it through, you know, letting <laughs> letting Sony and God of War do it for you seems like a pretty stupid decision as a parent. Um, so some of these books being pulled from libraries, yeah, I think it is appropriate. I, v for Vendetta, Why the Last Man, several of the, the Handmaid's Tale. Depends on the library, though. Okay, we're talking elementary school. Yeah, probably most of the books listed there should go. Superman smashes a clan. I don't think so. I think that that is not, um, in a, I, I mean, that, I, I don't know. I, I, I have never understood the argument that that book is, uh, is, you know, uh, unsu you know, political bludgeoning. The clan was bad. I mean, what, what are we even talking about here? Um, and I think that book was handled, you know, handled that in a, in a way that's at least more appropriate for all ages. Um, but, but again, all these themes have to have something to go along with it. Kids need context. Um, I, I, you know, I mentioned this story, I think in a video where, um, you know, as you know, I'm moving to Texas and, uh, my daughter, uh, basically, uh, is excited and says, I'm moving to Texas. Teacher says, uh, well, make sure you ask your parents where you're going to be able to get an abortion. And my daughter's 11. Um, that, that wasn't an appropriate conversation to have in front of the class on a many different levels at that age. Sorry, it wasn't. Um, my daughter felt called out, didn't understand why this was going on, you know, I, and, and it was just, it was wrong for that to happen. Several of these titles don't make sense for schools like that. Um, but not because they're LGBTQ or bigotry or racism. It's because the context for what's going on in that comic hasn't been explained and no different from a book, no different from anything else. I think you have to match the context with the content that you have in the library. And if you're not doing that, then I think you're providing a disservice to those kids. That's, that's my opinion anyway. Now, of course, as you get older in school, you get into high school and the books, the list that uh, this viewer sent over said that the books will not be uh, available in high school. Um, that one's more confusing to me. Um, because several of these, uh, again, I mean, things like V for Vendetta or Handmaid's Tale or Out of Darkness or some of these others, I mean, you are hitting on those themes at that age. So that one's a little bit, I don't understand. That feels like a bit of an overreaction to what's going on. Um, I, you know, I, I think that there's this whole debate right now, of course, of indoctrination of children and we can't indoctrinate children. And I, I agree, you shouldn't indoctrinate children. But I do think that that also gets pushed way too far where it's like, all right, we can't teach any of these things. And eventually that's a slippery slope down to, you know, insanity. That's where, you know, back when I was a kid and I, I know this has happened many times during the years, but they were getting, they were wanting to ban books like Tom Sawyer and uh, Huckleberry Finn and stuff like that from schools. And, uh, and you know, I, I, at a high school level, yeah, no, those books belong to be there. They deserve to be there, should be there. You are getting the context of what's going on that goes on in that school. Is a book like Huck Finn, as it's originally written, appropriate for, you know, first and second grade? Um, probably not, but not because it uses, you know, the N word because it doesn't make any sense for that age. It does. It's, you, you need a kid version or a dumbed down version of that book. Any more than you'd want like Clifford, the red dog in a high school. I mean, I know our educational standards are kind of crappy, but you wouldn't want, you know, that doesn't make any sense either. It goes both ways. So I, I, I think that some of these books, uh, yes, they don't belong in schools personally. Um, I do believe that people are using it like a political football right now and intentionally, um, you know, just, just they're, they're, it's, it's another weapon in the, the overall political and culture war. I think that you, and when, unfortunately, what I see happening in this is you see some very blue states throwing some of these books way too young into school libraries and, uh, and, you know, inappropriately so without context that are, that is incorrect there. Then you see red states go, well, we're going to, 
we're going to ban them all. And so they ban the books all the way through high school, which is a kind of a dumb overreaction in a lot of cases. And just once again, it becomes another way that the R's and the D's get to fight each other and screw around and uh, provide no value for families and kids. I mean, th 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 let's, kid let's not kid ourselves here. Almost none of this stuff is actually for families because nobody's talking about the context of what's going on. When you do that, it gets pretty easy. It gets pretty, pretty obvious, pretty quick what you should do if you're working off of the context of the age that's reading it. If you're, uh, you know, if you're, you're, if you, if that's, that's rarely where the argument goes. So unfortunately, so hopefully that answer, that's my opinion on it. Lots of people have different opinions and everything else. Um, I wish the people who were against, you know, these pages that keep getting shared around on uh, social media, which depict, like I said, graphic oral sex and everything. And people are sharing it like, look at this filth. It's like, dude, why are you posting this all over Twitter? I understand you want to shock people and just to say, look what's here. But, uh, you know, throw a black bar or something over that. Put put some, put some uh, you know, just, just throwing it out on Twitter is, you know, if you're outraged because kids can see this stuff and you're sharing it on a public social media platform, you are sharing it with kids. You are. Don't, don't double down on the problem. Again, you can, you can censor it up to whatever you do, but if that's your outrage, what are you doing? I don't know. That, that drives me crazy. Anyway, let me know your opinions in the comments below. And uh, thanks for listening.